Hey guys, welcome back to the outfit. I'm Chris. I'm Anne. And we are currently tackling the Frenchman's Track in Cape York, very tip of the peninsula. So this track is 54 kilometers long. We're only about 4K in. Coming up is the Pasco River crossing, which should be relatively deep. That'll be an interesting one. We spoke to a local a couple of days ago who reckons we'll really struggle on this track due to our size. And we also spoke to a Unimog owner who said he wouldn't take his uh, mog down here. He did it in his 79 series. So we'll see how we go. We've just been crossing some sort of desolate kind of wasteland dotted with these huge termite mounds. So these termite mounds are really cool. They've got like a cathedral shape and they serve a number of purposes. One of them being they're completely resilient to fire. So the termites can be in there and be almost completely unaffected while all the foliage around burns. It also keeps them away from the floods if they go high in their termite mound. And the fins on the edges of the cathedral also act as a bit of a heat dissipation unit, kind of like a heat sink. So yeah, pretty phenomenal colony that they build, all dotted through here. So we're just gonna ticky tour our way through and then worst case we've decided between ourselves we'll turn around if we have to yeah. no biggie it's not a really long track and there is another way around so it's not exactly overlanding so yeah we'll see how we go track very cool track terrain keeps changing it's really beautiful yeah really really liking it <laughs> slow though very <laughs> slow going slow progress yeah we've got 2k to the river this way all right so we have arrived at the pasco river crossing there was a little camp just before yeah pretty good so we parked the mug there and just walking to the river crossing just to kind of like have a look at our possible line, see how deep it is, just safer to check it out before we nose in the mug over there and then we can't turn around. Chris is ahead. He will have the honors of crossing the river. All right, so we just come back from the, the walk and scouting mission. I'm out of breath, my God, it's super steep. There's a few motorbikes like, actually that are crossing. We wanted to wait for them, but they're sending the bikes in themselves for a kind of zip line. <laughs> so, so random. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. Chris wants to do it before lunch. Wish us luck.
morning. Huh? Hello. So we thought we had to recap what happened yesterday. Unfortunately, all our clips that we did on the GoPro had no audio, so I went through the footage and that was pretty upsetting, but we didn't lose too much. Luckily, most of the crossing, we did it on a nice camera, but yeah, we thought we'll like do a bit of storytelling to uh, yeah let you know what happened. Yeah. So basically the river crossing, the Pasco river crossing was much more intense than we thought it would be. Yeah, it really was. So. The actual river itself was absolutely fine for the mog because depth isn't an issue. Mm. Um, so yeah. one of the challenges first up was there was a there were a lot of people. So we're not used to it. We're not used to having to. It was nicer because some of them were awesome, yeah, um, to help. but others were you know just watching and stuff. So that added a layer of complexity, especially for Ange filming as yeah, well. That was tricky. So and then. Uh, Going down into the Pasco River was pretty much fine. It was really steep and a mm -hmm. bit slippery. So with the heavy truck, I was on the exhaust brake first gear, just trying to feather the brakes a little bit as well. Got into the river, got a nice line through the river and then coming back up out of the river, which is usually, I think, the one that people come down. We yeah, I think most people doing from west to east, we yeah. did it from east to west. So we're coming up it and traction wasn't an issue at all. So I think I made a couple of mistakes. First mistake, I tried to turn onto a flat area. It was right up at the very top of the technical section. I could have kept going straight, mm. but it started to get a bit narrow and, and a lot of foliage and trees. So I thought it'd be best to just park up on this flat area. So I swung it right and I didn't know what line I was taking. I couldn't really tell and I was yeah, a bit flustered so and Ange couldn't spot me because she was on the filming and there were a few other people there. So flying blind, I kind of just went for it and one of the wheels must have grabbed or I lost traction and it sort of grabbed and semi-stalled and then it slid back and felt like it was going to roll and it really scared the crap out of me to yeah, be honest. Yeah, both of us were like, I had my heart stop for a few so seconds. So there was um, one guy behind who said it lifted both wheels, so um, both right hand, we uh, front and rear lifted up. I think Ange has maybe got the wheel lifting in the front there. Yeah, I saw the and front that one, that was terrifying. <laughs> feeling, so, and then kind of regathered composure, sort of went for again, I think I stalled it completely, restarted her up and then hung straight instead, which I pretty much the line I should have always really taken. Uh, and it got up fine. Yeah. So in retrospect, I think more spotting would have been good. Yeah. Second of all, better line from myself would have been good. And thirdly, I probably should have had diff locks engaged. So I didn't, I had, I, I very, I almost have never done diff locks in the truck. And the reason being is there's, a, you can only engage both at the same time. Mm. I might set it up at some points that I can do just front and just rear. I think that would be really handy, but stock, you can only do both air lockers. And then the steering gets so stiff, there would have been no way that I could have turned it right to get onto this patch. So maybe that would have fixed it. But all in all, yeah. no damage to we the We made it fine to that flat section where we came inside and there was a few of my clothing on the floor. The coffee jar somehow escaped from the overhead cabinet, but didn't open, which was great. <laughs> and I think, yeah, the main damage was actually we lost a dozen of eggs. I opened the fridge and it was too late. I couldn't even catch it. Mm. I managed to save one egg. <laughs> Which I had this morning Which, in a pancake. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, I was so impressed with the camper itself because I heard this big bang from outside and I was like thinking of the worst and no, no damage inside. So that was pretty impressive. We did notice when we did a walk around the mug, um, a little damage on our fuel tank which we don't know how it happened it's got kind of like a yeah basically where the filler neck is it looks like it's just been slightly pushed in so there's mm. no it's not damaged but there's like there's definitely a little concave recess to yeah, it now no no idea how um, that happened yeah. so very strange but, uh, and a few scratches a bit of paint chips but yeah that's cosmetic so we're very happy with how it went down in the end really yeah i mean <clears throat> As always, the MOG is so much better than I am, so it just carries it just on and I'm the one who actually like has a little panic attack and has to change my underwear. So oh, yeah. And, and then Yeah, after that section that you do for the Pasco River, there's still like a bit of technical um, ruts, like big holes, big boulders. Like it was like still mm. quite challenging. Like here, uh, me, I was still quite stressed from before Chris as well. So 
we kind of like went through it. We, had, we skipped lunch. We we're like, all right, let's just do it. Let's continue through that. So yeah, we carried on. Then it becomes a little bit, it got, it got better. This was a bit, I think a bulldozer came through. So we could make yeah, it a there was Yeah, there was a large long section. I spoke to one of the bulldozer drivers and he said that they're bringing in a, a big Telstra set up on a, on a um, I guess like a big pylon mm -hmm. up on top of one of the hills. So they have to get a giant 220 ton crane and I think That's is what he said in concrete. So they cleared the whole way so we could shoot through at about 30k an hour in parts. Yeah, that was, was nice. good. It made a bit of progress. And then there was like another narrow section which was tricky for us due to our length. Um, to kind of like go mm -hmm. around trees and we made it here to the clay crossing and we're like all right we wanted to push through to the uh, next river the Wenlock river but we decided we're gonna camp here it's a beautiful spot yeah. we can rest for tomorrow and be fresh so we packed up the mug and we jumped in the water there's a beautiful like creek that goes where you normally have to drive yeah. and we had a swim and it's like that was a milky turquoise kind oh, of color, color from the clay it's beautiful so yeah. beautiful must be coming out from a spring and i think it enters the wentlock a bit further down yeah so it's it's safe to swim here like it's coming from up high in the range and there's no crocs so yeah that was beautiful yeah so that so, was a nice end of the day and then uh, i went spotlighting last night yeah. and which was what was awesome is literally like maybe 15 20 meters behind the mog was a death adder just on the on the road, on the track. So um, got the light in on him. That's the first death adder, death adder I've ever seen in Australia because you would never see them in the day until it's too late. Um, they're yeah. an ambush snake, yeah. so they normally hang out at the bottom of tree bases in the day. But um, this guy, he would kill you a hundred times over if it bit you. So um, yeah, very cool to see that and spotlight a little fish, but nothing too much else. Yeah, so this is yeah. us uh, for now. We are ready to pack up, put back our window covers and yeah, get to the Wenlock River. We don't really know what to expect. We've got first to final line to get out of this clay crossing. So yeah. we see how we go. Yeah, there's three entrances. I think we will take the chicken track, um, especially after I'm running out of underwear. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, so this is what we have to deal with. This, I believe, would be the harder one for us due to the depth. And because it's kind of like on an angle, this one looks more manageable, but we're still not too sure if we would fit. I'll hold the tape measure on the other side. So we've seen the technique being done. 2.3. Yeah, so that's too narrow for us. You can see a lot of scrap mark on the side and on the other side actually people have been digging to make it wider nope that's a Which, no for if we had to do it we could do it we would just have to dig the sides out and just scrape the mold down but no thank you And we've got in the distance a little cockatoo meeting. <laughs> They're so loud. They're so funny. Wish we could understand what they say. Probably like, I don't know, they look like super aggressive and they look like they're having a fight. But probably not. Probably just like talking to each other normally. <laughs> Yeah, this camp spot was really nice for that. We had a lot of bird life this morning when we had breakfast. So that was really nice, nice and peaceful. Good night of sleep. Yeah, highly recommend if you do the Frenchman's track to camp at the clay crossing. Unfortunately, it's a bit deceiving here, but with the tree that's here, we get too close to that tree, so we can't really fit. 
so there's a path around there's just a dead tree on the way so Chris is chintzing it so that we can go around luckily there's a way around yeah perfect view clearing Yeah, you're good, babe. All right, and this is the Wenlock River. Beautiful spot. You can actually park on the other side of the bank and easily camp here. That would be a really nice spot too. Very shallow water, so no issue at all in terms of depth. In that respect, the Pasco River was much deeper. So now we're walking again the exit of the Wenlock River, which for most people will be the entry. So this is what it looks like. Looks quite steep again. We were told we saw one car along the way. That, that might be the last really steep section. So yeah, we're just investigating. It does look very steep. But it's not muddy, it's a bit sandy ground. Oh, less obstacle for the day, hopefully. You good? Nice. Perfect line. A bit more passenger. You perfect. Straight ahead. Oh my god, I'm, I'm shaking. Oh, the more crushed it though. Oh, jeez. Oh no, we got some damage. Okay, we'll need to go and get the the cap. So this is where the diesel heater is scraped and the, it's here. So it's diesel. Damn. Yeah, there must have been that tree branch here. Oh, that's getting. Okay, so to recap the Frenchman's track, absolutely awesome track in terms of the forward driving and the scenery they're pretty intense <laughs> it was intense and that pasco river crossing is phenomenal because it's nice and deep yeah it's probably one probably the deeper deepest one that we'll ever do i'm not too sure it might be yeah it may be in the mog for now anyway <laughs> wouldn't do it again now that we've done it i mean it's just it's kind of like one of those things that we can now tick off the list and a shame about the the damage on the toolbox and on the diesel heater tank but all in all no it could have been much worse that's yeah. the thing could have been much much worse now looking back at the footage i'm 
so so impressed with not only the mug with Chris driving capabilities I could have never done it myself like not a <laughs> chance uh, but yeah just like the stress that the truck caused was maybe especially like right yeah. now I guess pregnant it's not ideal so yeah. yeah I just probably wouldn't do it again but it, glad that it's finished it wasn't a relaxing trip that's for sure. <laughs> so now we have come to the old telegraph track in Cape York to relax for the day we've got a beautiful creek behind us that's cockatoo creek behind us that you can see it's awesome and yeah so next week we will take you along all the way along cape york and all the way to the tip so that should be a very nice adventure awesome see you next week guys cheers to the support